I've always said that when I was young, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm quite mentally strong, like quite, kind of well put together in my head, like sort of quite confident that I know who I want to be as a person. Then suddenly everything just came crashing down and um, it was very, very hard to sort of pick myself up mm. out of that. I've always sort of focused on working on my city. Yeah. I think my goal was just to give the best tattoos that I could possibly give to my city. Mm. And that was literally my main goal, like when I started. Yeah. Um, and I like to think, you know, got one of the, the best shops in, in the city. As soon as I started using it, I was like, this makes so much more sense. It's so much more accurate and, and the perfection is so much easier. And you get softer hitting machines. Of course, yeah. Lot, yeah. And um, yeah, so if you're looking for perfection, which you need with fine line, it, need, it needs to be like, I think that's what like I've been addicted to now is just doing the most perfect kind of um, tattoo. And, mm. and that's what sort of fine lines offered to me. Yeah. And I love it. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is the 21st Century Tattoo. Sweet. Lee Tilbrook. Yes, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, man. You? Yeah, I'm sweet. Thank that's you it. so much for, for heading down. No worries, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, mate. We've got so much to kind of get into. Mm -hmm. We're literally, just before we started recording, um, we're talking a little bit about, like, social media there. And yeah. I, I would love to know, like, because you don't really see much of you on socials. No. So it's it's good to kind of sit down and be yeah. able to kind of... I was going to say, I probably have, like, the least amount of followers of maybe anyone you've maybe had on here. But, and not... I've had, like, Instagram for, like, since that started. Mm. And, uh, yeah, just not been, like, sort of into socials. Um, tried for a long time to sort of like, I was like, oh, sweet, this is where it's going. You need to put, mm. put effort in. And uh, yeah, it just never seemed to really have Man, the knack the whole, of doing it. Yeah, the whole thing is just like a, is a minefield, isn't it? But it's like, it's good. And I feel like nowadays people want to see so much more. And that's, again, what I'm trying to do with the podcast. It's mm -hmm. great to be able to actually chat. Yeah. chat to you guys like the artists and stuff like that I like you're in the inspiration for me for sure oh, thanks, um, you know what I mean especially the style that you're doing mm. you're absolutely smashing it like there's not a huge amount of single needle no. bump in tight three and it's, artists it's, it's new isn't it you know and I think like, that's something that I was dying to talk to you about because obviously I love your stuff as well thanks, and man. like we do very very similar stuff Yeah, and it's sort of a little bit hot hot topic at the moment isn't it this fine line sort of like does yeah. it last does it like mm. is it going to spread all that shit like I don't know if you saw the other day that yeah. um, it was all the sun obviously but um, it was buzzing around on, on all of my feeds about um, that fucking do you see that castle was it the castle or cathedral on the hand and it just yeah, all turned yeah, yeah, black yeah. or some shit like that Yeah, and I, yeah I just think it's just getting a bit of a, a bit of a hard rap and it's just mm. mate well this is it we'll delve in because yeah. I want to know the secrets and yeah. how you kind of go about okay. creating that stuff yeah um, it's sick. I don't like, I don't never know where to start with these, yeah. but like it makes the most sense to really kind of understand where your like background lies. Cool. Yeah. I know you've been in the industry a little while. I mean, how yeah. long have you been tattooing now? Uh, 18 years this year. 18 this, years. Yeah. Man. In June. Yeah. Mad. Yeah. When you can see that in the work, yeah. obviously. So talk me through like, again, how you managed to, how you got into tattooing. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, oh, well, yeah, I started at 18. So like, Eight, eight, 18 seems like a big number for me actually this year it's like well, I was thinking oh 20 years tattooing that's going to be like huge but like 18 years like I started at 18 yeah. it's been 18 years 18 is like half of my life so I'm 36 37 this year yeah. um, and like I get to tattoo like people that weren't born like mm. when I started tattooing yeah, so it's like 18 seems like quite a, quite a cool number mm. um, and yeah I just started straight off the bat as soon as I could as soon as I turned Had 18 quite a traditional apprenticeship um, yeah well, kind like, of yeah I, focusing on doing a lot of tr trad work I yes. presume that was a lot of like what, the, what was that was kind of just the huge at the time yeah, yeah. Um, and you know what actually it was Jeff Jeff Gogwe I never know how to say his second name um, he was just I'd never seen tattooing in that way and he was like just phenomenal and it was actually one like his paintings at first I was just like whoa I like tattooing more than I kind of thought it was mm. and um yeah I was just super interested in it I went to get a tattoo uh, when I was 18 I didn't look 18 I looked about 12 when I was 18 so uh, I had to wait till I was old mm. enough I got a tattoo and I was just like, that's pretty cool. I reckon I could do that. And uh, yeah, just went home, bought a kit off eBay. Fucking yeah, mad. And I, bought, I had a, like a Phoenix liner, I think it was, and a, yeah. fucking, and a dragon shader or some shit like that. Yeah. Cheap as shit from, from eBay. I had no idea what I was doing. Ordered this kit. 
And I went to get tattooed by this lady, uh, Sam, who um, I just started asking a bunch of questions. I was like, how does this carbon paper work? I can't seem to get it to fucking transfer. And she okay. then, and then she asked me, she was like, oh, like, like why? Yeah. And um, uh, I'd actually taken in one of my drawings to get tattooed on me, which is the fucking worst idea in the world. And she, but she, she, was, well. she was lovely. Yeah, she was great, man. She's such a tidy tower as well. And, um, yeah, and she sort of uh, just said, like, why are you asking? And I was like, oh, I, just, I bought a kit. I want to get tattoo. I want to get into tattooing. Yeah. And um, she said, just come in. Like, she'd look through my book of stuff that I draw, and she was like, come in, I'll, I'll teach you tattoo. It was, like, Sweet. super, yeah, fairly easy walk in the door. Mm. And um, It was obviously meant to be then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it was super, super cool. I got there with my kit, and she just threw it all in the bin, and she was like, this is, like, <laughs> it's shit. I think we put one, like, tip that I'd got through oh, the sterilizer, like, sterilizer, and it just fucking decayed so yeah. uh, threw it on the bin and just started again she taught me taught me properly and um yeah it was kind of weird actually because she uh just kind of towed a lot with like three liners so when i was first learning i was like lining and shading with three liners mm. which is kind of weird that it's come full circle to that's oh, kind of what that's i do what now kind of yeah on. so what sort I, of stuff was she producing um she did a lot of like um just at that time it was like anything that kind of came in the shop but she did a lot of like horror stuff mm. um so the shop was like all like based about like horror and stuff like that it was quite cool quite dark and yeah. um and she was a wicked artist. she doesn't tell you now unfortunately which which is sad but um yeah she was great and couldn't have asked for someone better to sort of show me the ropes mm. but quite quickly after a few months you know like i um i decided that uh i needed to move more into the center of town and just that business mind came and was like ah, more clients they're gonna be more in the center of town yeah so i moved on fairly quickly um i can't i can't really remember how long it was there but yeah moved on quite quickly and uh, she showed me the ropes but um kind of went for it on my own from there really yeah but i mean it's, a, it's such a large period of time where do you do you think you picked up most of your knowledge at that point or was it kind of no, like, a lot later yeah. i mean i guess walk me through kind of how and where you started. Yeah. Um, I knew you're, you're originally from... Uh, so, well, I've, well, originally where I was born. Yeah. So, born in Norway. That's it. Yeah. Norway, and sorry. Then, I yeah. didn't want to say. No, yeah. <laughs> um, dad was in the RAF, so I moved around. So, That's I lived it. there. And then uh, then we lived in Germany. And, uh, and then I moved um, to kind of near where I live now. Uh, when I was like 11, I think. Oh, okay, so, fine. Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. So, it was like in that area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then settled there and... Uh, yeah, Peterborough's Peterborough. It's not the greatest, but mm. it's uh, it's it's my home now, so it's cool. Sick. I like yeah, it. Man. Made a, like a good living for myself there. Got some great friends, and and yeah, life's sweet. So it's yeah, cool. Nice. Um, and then yeah, talk me through kind of the studios and stuff, and like yeah. how you kind of developed. Because obviously you went from doing and producing a lot of that traditional mm. um, traditional work, and kind of like we said. Um, can do a bit of everything like you're a yeah. massive all-rounder yeah um and then yeah talk me through how we kind of ended up at this like kind of single needle fine line yeah. style okay. so um yeah moved on from there went into a shop in the center of town which uh is i'm not going to give it any airtime. so it was just a shop <laughs> <laughs> um and um did quite a lot of like it was fun you know but it was a time when i i was i actually i moved there and I was paid a wage to work there. Mm. Um, so I was paid, no matter how many times I did in a day, I was paid a wage. And uh, I think I sort of ruffled some feathers when I was just saying, like, I, don't, I think we should like be paid on percentage of how much work we do. Um, so yeah, the lady there hated me at that time and uh, sort of changed. Like, I think it word got out on all the shops, like it was a franchise of, of tattoo shops. Oh, and they really? all had to change to like percentage, which... Uh, which yeah, kind of stuck for her, but it was like kind of fair for all the artists. And absolutely, um, and well, you see that still, like yeah. Because when I first got there, I think at one point like, I was just, you know, we just had books of script. I was doing like maybe twenty names a day, <laughs> just like churning them out, being paid the same amount. I was like, I'm working a lot here, and like the, I'm charging quite a lot for these tattoos. Yes, yeah, so where's it all going? And yeah. getting getting none of the money. So. Yeah, um, when I moved to there, it was on a wage, but it was in the centre of town. I was like, that's going to progress to sort of get my name out there more. People in town are going to know who I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I worked there for a bit. And then ultimately, I think I was destined to always sort of be sacked from there because she didn't like me. But I started working at another shop that was in uh, Swatham. So it was called Hope and Glory. Yeah. Very, very cool shop. Uh, Tem and Ollie were probably the the two people that sort of taught me quite a lot in town. And that's mm. when it's shifted over to being a, it was a custom shop, um, okay. which was still fairly 
kind of n- new for that time, I guess, really. Mm. Um, like the era of like shops that look like antique shops with like taxidermy everywhere. And yeah. Yeah. I think no. I went through a stage myself as well. I was like, I want to look like a gentleman tattooer and just wearing like a waistcoat at work and shit. And yeah, I loved I it. Quite it was like, I, think, I can't remember it was like maybe 2000, 2009, 2010, like era of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Loved One that. of the first shops, I mean, I worked in a couple, I worked in a very kind of nineties flash. Yeah. Loads of rows of chairs and yeah. like ten pounds tattoos, yeah. like pick your thing off the wall. And I worked in those kind of darker, very cozy mm. taxidermy, like yeah. ornate, yeah, almost gothicy. Yeah, and I feel they were like the it's, sort of the start of that custom custom tattoo shops. Like yeah. I feel before that, it was just yeah, just tattoo shops. And if That's you true, were in actually, at that time, yeah. it was all just yeah, like the the boards of Flash, the Jenny Clark stuff that was just there with all the swirls and all that shit. Mm. Um, and yeah, so moving over to that shop, which was probably like two hours away from me and I'd, uh, I'd have to travel there every morning from where I was. Um, but I just learned, I, I learned a bunch there really just about the industry, like mm. learn, um, like they were in like tattoo magazines and they knew Perry from Total Tattoo and stuff like that. And it was just like, just this whole new circle of like yeah. connections. Um, and I think I first went to Brighton Tattoo Convention and just helped them out on, on the um on the booth and it was just a whole new world so it sort of went from that sort of street shop sort yeah. of place to realizing what like tattooing was and the, yeah. the custom side of it and and, it was and super, making super a name amazing. for yourself you've obviously got quite yeah. an entrepreneurial like bit of a business mind yeah set and, and i think that came a lot later i think at the time i kind of i don't know i kind of clocked on where sort of tattooing was and mm. I wanted that custom side of things and wanted it to be like sort of like that way yeah but yeah I don't think I grasped onto it as, as quick as I would have liked to have um, yeah do you think like because I talked to a lot of tattoo artists you know and 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 everyone was very was busy you know mm. like and do you think maybe tattooing and even though tattooing the popularity of tattooing is yeah. a lot greater now like do you, and have you observed like lulls in tattooing? I mean, I don't know whether speaking to a few people now at the moment, yeah. particularly maybe the economic climate we're in. Yeah. Um, are we maybe going through one of those at the moment or is maybe the cost of tattooing driving clients? Out? I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe a mixture of all of it. Um, I think I remember, I can't remember when it was when the other um, crash was, I think it was 2012 and we were like, God, like everyone was struggling for money and stuff like that. Um, but people always find ways to find money for the luxuries that they want in life. Mm. You know, I think people would rather like, if they're told they're not allowed, they've got to pay more money for certain things. I think they'd rather spend it on the luxuries and have clothes and have nice things like tattoos than than spend it on, on their bills. But I feel like this time around now, it's like, it's definitely a bit tighter than it's ever been. Yeah. It's it's mad to observe it and see, and just kind of like, um, I don't know. It would be very difficult getting into the industry now, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, compared to like, I mean, I was, I was very, I'm very grateful for my way into the industry, and I, like, I'm so glad I got into it when I did. Yeah. Like, have you? And it's a bit of a cliche question, but it's something I always want to know. Like, have you? And what have you maybe noticed has changed? Like really the, the amount of towers, <laughs> the amount of shops, like the yeah. competition is just way higher. Um, and tattooers that are getting into it now, they're just so good. I think like the machines that we use now are completely different to Mm. sort of like when you picked up a coil, it was sort of just trying to tame a a wild horse at at first, you know, whereas you start with like one of these pen machines now and it's, yeah, it's just uh, it's the it's access a lot to easier. the information on how to use that stuff. And also that, man, you've got like yeah. YouTube channels of just like, will just gift you that knowledge. Um, mm. And although you can't learn everything from, from a YouTube channel, but like it's a, it's a start. And um, yeah, so I think that side of things... The I guess technology, I, the knowledge, like having having like the disposable inst, uh, Instagram and even Pinterest, like has every great picture that you could ever want mm. on there. Like I remember trying to find tattoos was only in magazines and that was kind of it really mm. like Instagram hadn't started when I started tattooing so I had MySpace and I think I followed like a couple of tattooers on there like Stuart Quitwell, uh, Quitwell and um, Stuart Robson and like mm. people like that who like had MySpace um, but that was it that's all I could that's all you could see really so yeah. I think having that 
side of social media is is ultimately great. It's a Absolutely. bit of a downfall, but it's also like it's such a great. It's thing. weird, isn't it? And I guess it's just uh, I just wonder where it's going to go. You know, yeah. at what point will it slow? It's will got it... to, right? Yeah, you like think every, so. there's always like something like when when you have Facebook, like oh, what's going to beat Facebook? And sort of mm. slowly everyone, well, everyone still has Facebook, but I guess it's just gonna, on it. Yeah, it's just going to evolve and become. I guess TikTok is that new thing. that new sort of. Um, the new Instagram. It just and I can't get on hold. I can't get on board of it. It's just too much shit. To and do. this is it. That's what I wanted to ask you. It goes back to what I kind of originally asked you mm. at the very beginning is like, um, using social media and stuff now, like how do you stay relevant in a, in such a competitive I don't know. I need someone to tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you tell me? Um, I, I don't know. Like I set up a shop, TikTok and stuff like that. And it's sort of just, it's just way too much to be doing to having to to work five days a week and to consistently be sort mm. of creative and doing tattoos and then also make sure that you're filming it, taking decent photos and doing all that. It's, it's a lot of hard work. So yeah, um, especially and again we spoke about this earlier, but you're a family man. You know, you got yeah. three kids. Yeah, I mean that is it must be so difficult to be able to juggle everything together. Yeah, it's like um, I get back from work sometimes and like. Um, got my face buried in my phone still and, and the missus is just sort of like I'm at home and I'm going to just sort of be be mm. aware and paying attention but it's sort of that's the time if I'm not tattooing I tattoo like sort of eight hours a day six to eight hours a day like get home and that's the time really when I can work on on the the, yeah. the Instagram side and but things then like that the so then you're just sort yeah. of buried in your, in, in your phone and doing that and that kind of that sucks mm. don't really want that you used to be able to like even when it was taking a photo of it making sure that you're looking at your Instagram and keeping that up to date that that was a that was a lot at the time. So now it's even more. I'm to keep up and going. Oh, like photos aren't good enough now. Like, they want reels and they want they want videos. And yeah. it's just like, fuck. Have, have you managed to strike a balance now? And I mean, what's your kind of? I guess I'd love to know. Like your, how do you do your bookings? And uh, are you quite strict with giving yourself that time? Uh, luckily, my bookings are all done through the shop. So I speak to people on my Instagram, but it's a brief chat. Look at what they want, give a quote, and then it's just a template sent. And then they have to then go through the shop to book it. In. Have you got like so, a manager? At the shop. Yeah, got a great manager at the shop. Um, nice. So that's of, something, you know, it's quite, oh, quite hard to come by. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I say that to a lot of artists that uh, end up getting working at the shop. I'm just like, look, like it's like worth its weight in gold having a great manager who can who can do that. Some of my artists still don't even like to push the work over to the shop. They're happy to just do it themselves. Hmm. Um, but then that's the side of things that I'm just like, well, you, that's what you pay your cut for. That's what you pay your chair rental for. Like, like we have a manager here to, to do all that. Like relieve yourself from that stress. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so worth its weight in gold, having a good manager to be able to take that side of things. And people have these new booking systems, booking forms and stuff like that, which are super cool. But mm. I think it's nothing better than sort of just being able to just call up, speak to someone and okay. book something in over the phone yeah no absolutely yeah I just couldn't I couldn't no. I couldn't do it yeah um, do you have like booking forms and stuff like that I and- do use a booking form just purely because like if phone calls are good and I tend mm. to voice note as well yeah. because I think like you sometimes if you send someone a voice note mm. they tend to voice note back yeah. sometimes they'll voice note back yeah. not always but like Depends yeah, they are I guess if, if they're on- local <laughs> in person yeah because like I would rather meet them vibe with them see what yep. thing they're after do you know what I mean yeah I, and we still do consultations at the shop like it's a huge yeah, thing that I love like because we're a street shop it's like it's open doors um, half ten in the morning like we'll always set consultations and we just get to sit down and talk through so, ideas if they're local obviously and they're getting tattooed like yeah. and they're, they're from people I don't want it to be too hands off do you know what I mean but then also mm. like the more information I can get, the better, because yeah. I want to make the process as efficient as possible yeah. for both of us. Sometimes you don't need that, though. Sometimes you can just, they're like, they send a picture or maybe something that, referencing for something that I've already done. I'm mm. like, sweet, that's easy. Like, yeah, sweet, this is how much it is. Here's the information, call the shop, drop a drop a deposit on the link and, mm. uh, and we're good, get you booked in. But yeah, I prefer talking and being in person. I feel like it, one, it's personal, but two, like, I just... Um, I'm just awful at writing. I'm just very, mm. very shit at that side of things. So yeah, if it's uh, yeah, no, easier fair. to talk to someone and and do that, and for phone calls, I prefer phone calls. Like you know when you get on like chats on like I fucking when you're like trying to pay a gas bill or something yeah, like that. It's like, oh, we'll put you on online I'm chat. Like same. fuck off. I just want to literally chat to a human and just get this sorted and I know as soon as possible. Then. Yeah, I'm so, the same. I'll, like, I'll, go way of thinking. A, I'll go to like a person check out, not to like the self scan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Another quick one about hex cartridges from the Ghost Cartridge range. These are the most recently introduced, but these are the stipple shaders. They come in a number of configurations, but they're really good for anyone who likes to do a lot of stipple work, but over a larger scale. Make sure you grab these exclusively at Star with the code ATFCT10 for 10% off. Another thing I was going to ask you, touching a bit briefly on what we were talking about earlier, mm. was like, do you think there's like a popularity in certain styles or trends? Oh, 100%, but yeah. like varying across the country. Now, I know you do like yeah. a lot of conventions. Mm. I know you've done a fair bit of guest spotting and stuff yeah. as well. Um, like, is that important? And do you enjoy doing that? And maybe where do you notice that the differences? I actually don't. I don't enjoy doing it. Um, and like conventions love conventions. Like just purely for kind of the party and for like meeting people. Yeah. But they're hard work. They're, they're stressful. Um, they're becoming a lot of money to do now as well. Like they're, they're a lot more expensive than they used to be. Um, so when you go, I feel like you've got to hustle hard to, to make up the money to sort of even break, to break even. And then I'm working the whole weekend just to break even. So like now that my life's a bit different with family and stuff like that, it's sort of like, do I want to spend my whole weekend doing all that to make yeah. no money out of it, but just to be there and to network and that side of things. Yeah, it is networking. So it's sort of, it is networking and that's something that I've never really done. That's probably like, yeah, sort of not well known. Um, yeah. Did you do any com um, conventions this year? Uh, I just done the Big North convention in Newcastle. Oh, okay, because I can't remember seeing you. I did, I did Brighton. Yeah, I, I was did, meant to do I mean, Brighton and I stupidly had booked a holiday at the same time. So, mm. um yeah, I went on holiday. But, Are you doing uh, London this year? Uh, no, I was going to try and do that. I, like, I just, I don't know. I've just never been like that interested. I've always sort of focused on working on my city. Yeah. I think my goal was just to give the best tattoos that I could possibly give to my city. Mm. And that was literally my main goal, like when I started. Yeah. Um, and... I like to think, you know, got one of the the best shops in in the city. Like, there's a lot of good tattooers in the city. And Where I think, I'm sat, it looks yeah. like it. And I like, I follow. I've known of your work for a long time. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think you're smashing it. Yeah, I think I it's think really so. sick. I'm like a stickler for like clean line work and just yeah. clean work in general. Yeah. Um, and that was obviously what you produce. Yeah. Um, talking about the tattooing and the stuff that you produce. And going back to a bit what, what we were saying there, how do you work best? What's your kind of like ideal brief? And are like clients coming to you for certain things mm -hmm. or are they just saying, I just want a piece by you? Have you got flash? Yeah, so I don't really do too much flash. I don't draw. I try to sort of draw. No time. As, no, yeah. I just, <laughs> uh, and I've never really enjoyed like drawing or doing flash or painting. Mm. Tried a bit of it. Um but yeah, it's just, I don't know, that homework side of things probably comes back to like school. <laughs> mm. It just feels like going home and working all day to then have to draw all night and paint. And some people just love it. Some people are just so enthralled in just like the whole tattoo thing. Um, and if I'm honest, like I kind of like, I haven't been, I love tattooing. Like it, it's in my bones. I absolutely love it. But it was, it's always been a job to me because I've done it from 18. Um, and I always looked at it as, uh, I was very lucky to do a job that was sort of illustration based. like Yeah, uh, and like, creative, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so I'd gone and I was doing a degree when I started um, tattooing um, in illustration and graphics. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's so then I started doing um, tattoo designs for people. And then for a while, I was like, well, why am I doing tattoo designs? So I might as well just do the tattoos. So yeah, then I just I switched to that. Natural progression, and yeah. I did, I started my uh, apprenticeship and while I was doing my degree alongside like both. Um, really? uh, so I finished my degree just to please the parents. And uh, because it was, uh, yeah, I didn't love it when I started tattooing. So it was mm. sort of just, oh, I'll do this to make sure that if this does fail and they are right and this goes nowhere. What, did they, what, back what up. did they want you to get into? Uh, I don't really know. Probably anything but tattooing. <laughs> are they not really into it uh, anyway? they're, they're alright now they're, yeah they're okay with I it I think now. mine have given up now do you know what I mean I yeah. mean I, I got this piece on my face yeah. recently and I went and saw my mum for a birthday the yeah. other day I didn't say <laughs> anything I not told her I didn't just tell her I just turned up yeah. she didn't mention it <laughs> I was with her for hours yeah. so she 100% saw she it she definitely knew yeah, yeah just but, easier to avoid the, the whole thing isn't yeah, it yeah she's just like I'm not even going to talk about it yeah. I think so it's like we're at that point now yeah. which is yeah yeah, I think or we. I couldn't. I think the the vision that that maybe they had, maybe what was drilled into me was that like you have to go down the academic route. Yeah. 
to to get anywhere. Yeah, and, 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 I'm and glad, fair I'm glad play I went as well. To uni. I'm glad I did that. Yeah, but like. I couldn't have ever done anything that wasn't creative. No. And I think that's a wild risk as well. Like thinking back at that age, like, I don't, like if my kids, well, a bit different because obviously I've done it, but I can understand my parents' view of looking at it and just like, what are you going to go and tell you people? And especially like what, 18 years ago, it was like, it wasn't what it is now. So yeah. I think um, they were just scared. It was just like, what is this? Like, what is he doing? Yeah, like, sort like of thing. rebellion. Yeah. Or... And, and it definitely was a little bit, um, but mm. I think I saw a little spark of something and I'd gone, I was like, oh wow, there's actually like, Quite, there's more to this than just sort of like what you think of dingy tattoo shops. Like yeah. I, start, I came at that really perfect time when it, it's just started to transition, you know, like yeah. I, I was telling before that like TV shows about tattooing was on. So yeah. that was like, I think I'd started tattooing and then like Miami Ink came out and that was like, and that was the boom yeah, for, for the sure whole world really. Come on. Like Absolutely. before that it was, it's always been big. It's always been huge, but in its own little underground world. Mm. But then as soon as that happened, it was just out to the world. Yeah. Completely. And Completely out in the open. Yeah. Um, and I remember watching it and I remember saying to my mum, like, oh, yeah, I'd love, I think yeah. it was like, I want to get, I'd love to get a tattoo. Yeah. But like, absolutely not. Yeah. Probably just maybe want it more. Yeah. What about your little ones then? Like, have they show, are they quite creative? And, yeah. And could you, so if they, if they, when they grow up, you know, they want to be a tattoo artist, what would you say? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Well, I think my daughter will. So, um, so my daughter I have is with my ex wife and she's a tattooer as well. Okay. So I feel like that will, happen potentially actually. yeah or, or she'll go the other way it's like you guys are like no it's like i don't want to tattoo. It'll all be towed <laughs> i doubt it will but um yeah she's known nothing but sort of us both sort of being covered in tattoos and mm. yeah and she's shown a huge interest in art from from the get-go and so True. if she doesn't have art in her bones then i don't know whose kid she is so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm pretty sure she'll probably go along that route of uh, of wanting to do that and yeah we'd happily sort of mm. show the ropes and, and do all that it's yeah. still a long way off yeah well yeah, yeah for sure kind of like 10 11 years so <laughs> no no it's my plenty of time uh, yeah um do you know what? a little bit of a deep one mm. but like i'd love to know what is important to you maybe not necessarily when it comes to your career but just in general in life and uh being a good person i guess um ultimately like we i don't know sometimes struggle to do that um i think everyone's made mistakes haven't they but uh yeah ultimately to just yeah just be be nice be good to people and um and and hope for the for the same back i guess mm. I think ultimately that's that's kind of all I want from life. Mm. And has your has your, has your attitude? Because you say there about like you know just being a good person or whatever. I mean, has your attitude maybe in life changed? Like yeah. And and if so, like kind of how? yeah. I think I think the, the attitude of that has always been there. Um, but then certain things happen in life, and uh, yeah, uh, things naturally change mm. and age changes you and uh, you just get a different perspective it on life perspective, becoming a dad doing all that like I was saying my um, uh, so but me and my my ex-wife we split up and parted ways and we used to work together and, and do all of that so it was a huge huge change in my life uh, which was quite quite drastic really and um, yeah. really fucked me up for a while and um, I can imagine like, that's a lot to go through anyway yeah you know what I mean like yeah um, I mean, I've never personally gone through anything like mm. that, but yeah. I, I mean, think it's the same thing. You have to be quite mentally strong to get yourself through that. Yeah. Point. And you know what? And I, I've always said that when I was young, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm quite mentally strong, like quite, kind of well put together in my head, like sort of quite um, just quite confident that I know who I want to be as a person. Then suddenly everything just came crashing down. And um, it was very, very hard to sort of pick myself up mm. out of that. Um, and then I had my shop going. So I had like, I think like it was 12 people working there at the time. Really? So I think it was like eight or nine artists and I had a piercer, like laser technician and all of that. Um, and yeah, after the breakdown of my marriage, it really, really fucked me up. And I just sort of kind of spiraled, um, mm. kind of stopped giving a shit about tattooing, um, more about just numbing the pain of just being drunk and just going out and yeah. uh, and dating and just trying to like fucking find love again. It was just, it was oh, horrendous. Mate. It's like, and you think you've got the responsibility of having to make sure everyone else, everyone at the shop's okay. Yeah, exactly. And then have my daughter who was also like, it was brand new for me to be like a single dad and felt like I wasn't stepping up enough. And it was, yeah, it was just a very, very, very dark time in my life. 
Yeah. Um, they, I asked you briefly, but like you said your tattooing then just pretty much ceased for a bit. Yeah. I mean, I was still tattooing, but it was just sort of just turning up to work, just doing my job and, yeah. uh, and sort of getting out there as soon as possible. I just, I didn't want to be around that situation. I just, I just wanted to be out and uh, doing anything other than, because our friendship group was all in that shop. So Fair. it was, I'm not going to go into too much about it, but yeah, it was sort of, tight knit um, friendship yeah. uh, and it kind of like split the whole thing apart really oh, man. and yeah, I, I, I sort of ended up put, taking myself down a, just a, a lonesome sort of avenue and uh, yeah. yeah it kind of yeah it, it changed things um, but but ultimately now looking at it changed it like for the good there was a lot that I learned from um, losing I lost quite a lot Mm. And uh, and it changed things, but then it also sort of just changed my style. So that's when I started doing the fine line stuff. So my ex wife did that, and uh, oh, when was that was that at the yeah. point then where that kind so of she was doing that. Um, and, uh, she still does now, still great. Um, and uh, people were coming in and asking for it because obviously they'd seen some of it come out of the shop. Mm. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like any other tattoo, I'd, I'd do anything, anything that walks through the door, I'll do it. So that, um, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I started doing it. I was like, oh, fuck, like this single needle, like this is quite fun. Mm. And I just found a whole new challenge in it where it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was such a challenge. Mm. And I think like, that's why I absolutely love fine line because there's a whole different application to it than any other style of tattooing. Yeah. Like, and, and you cannot hide. No, you, no, you can't hide from all. anything. And, and line work was always my strong point. Um, yeah. And like, I, I can't believe it took me so many years to realize I'm just not good at color. <laughs> 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 and I do, it. and I do not know how to use a mag properly either. Um, like I'm just, yeah. so I can, I can cover larger areas of like soft, yeah, um, with just uh, with with a with a liner than I can a Mac. Yeah, man. And what I'm I'm we're very similar in yeah. that respect. Color, I'm kind of appreciate till the cows come home, but yeah. it's not for me. Yeah, and yeah, I'm the same. So like, yeah, that's use when a Mac it's... every now and then. But yeah, there are so many fundamentals to, yeah. to find on a single needle. If you're enjoying the episode this week, don't forget to leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Getting onto the nerdy bit then, yeah. talk me through maybe like um, how you, like your equipment and maybe um, like machine and the voltage you're using. Yeah. So I will always put my hands up and from the get-go of Tower, know nothing about machines. I have never cared to know anything about machines either, which I should have done. Um, like, especially with coil machines. Like I think that was the, that's why I find it so hard to, to get to a level of Tower that I was happy with because it's all about your machine. So, and, and I just knew nothing about coil machines and I didn't take the time to learn either. Mm -hmm. So if one broke, I'd just buy a new one. If like, I mean, if the back spring broke, I'd just buy one. Well, that's, yeah, that's gone. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I was just, I had, yeah, like, it's just pure honesty. I have no idea about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, what do I use at the moment? It's a uh, FK irons, like just Scion. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, How did the, you get onto the rosaries? Um, how did I? I think it was... Uh, just picking it up from other people, I yeah, guess. Yeah, there was a guy working at the shop and he was like, just have a go with one of these. Especially because I started getting into single needles. So when I first did that, I was using a coil and it was so hard. So, so hard. Um, just the temperamentalness of it. It was... Um, Obviously, it's so much more direct. It's so much more perfection, especially with the cartridges. And when you think about the length of a needle bar, just sort of the travel and the wobble that can happen in that length yeah. than when you're talking about a cartridge. It's For just, yeah, the accuracy so of it, yeah. It, uh, as soon as I started using it, I was like, this makes so much more sense. It's so much more accurate and, and the perfection is so much easier. And you get softer hitting machines. Of course, yeah. Bit. And... Um, yeah. So if you're looking for perfection, which you need with fine line, it, need, it needs to be like, I think that's what like I've been addicted to now is just doing the most perfect kind of um, tattoo. And, mm. and that's what sort of fine lines offered to me. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I oh, may, I'm couldn't agree yeah. more. I'm exactly the same. Mm. Um, have you ever like, have you been to any seminars or no. anything like that? No. Um, I don't know. It'd be just because I've not either. And I would yeah. love to go to some like the wrong, a huge amount of single needle. There's a lot of like fine line outline yeah. work out there. Mm -hmm. But like when it comes to this like illustrative single yeah. needle, yeah. it's not as many of us kind of doing no. it. Um, it'd be cool. Yeah. We should do one. I'd fucking I mean, go. Yeah. Let's do one. Let's do one, mate. I'd sit in there. I'd love to fucking I think like, it, pick it all apart. Yeah. You kind of go uh, because like I was saying it. earlier, like the main thing I think is the application of it. Yeah. So like when you go like, and that's why I find it so weird that people are, buzzing about talking about the like the fine line thing spreading uh, and talking about the, obviously ultimately line spread but I feel that that is 
heavily based on the the years of traditional and putting in them bolder lines um where if you go beyond that sort of that certain epidemic uh, like, like the layer of skin that you're going through yeah. like ultimately it's gonna sort of spread ever so slightly but i feel with fine line and with single needle stuff you're just kissing that skin like you're, you're not going in as far as you would do with a traditional tattoo mm. or with a bold line should i say and it sits on top of the skin more than it sits under the skin. Mm. So I think you're more in danger of things maybe just fading a little bit more and, and dropping out, which can always be topped up. Absolutely. It's way more visible when you go deeper, yeah. I think, is that, in it? Yeah. You're still like, having to put it in that layer that it won't fall out as yeah. it heals. It's but that perfect, it's just, once again, that perfection layer. It's just like, it's... Yeah. It, it's it's it a really, lot more, I feel like it's a lot more visual. Whereas, yeah. like, when I slap in bigger liners and stuff, like, yeah. you... Yeah, you can, you can, it goes in, it feels like it goes in yeah. smoother. Yeah, it's just one thing. I mean, I've got um, the apprentice at the studio, Libby, she's doing, we've just been going down and down and yeah. down on the groupings, yeah. you know, and like she's starting to to use single now just to like really sharpen up yeah. edges on lines and bits like that mm. just to kind of introduce her. And she's she's picking it up, but it's like a, yeah, it's just, a, it's another like string to your bow. For 100%. Work, and and it's a tough string. Like it's like, it's yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah. uh, but I think it's the same as like realism and with black and grey. You know, mm. as long as like yes, we're putting in lines, but and I've only just started. Actually, I did a lot of it with like seventy five percent black. I would line just because I wanted that softness. But then when it was coming back, I was like that line's too soft. It's too soft. Yeah. Um, and obviously, ultimately, you, you shade off of a lot of the sides. So same as like realism. Like as long as you back everything up with like some black in there. And you put that in your darkest areas. Yeah. Um, you know, so, ultimately yeah, so it's always going to fade and soften, but you need to make sure that the dark areas are dark enough that the softer areas, when they do soften, you've still got the you've still got the solidness of it. So I think having that background of knowing traditional tattoos and knowing where I need to put black and how solid it needs to be and having a solid outline and then bringing that into mm. um, fine line stuff as well. Just finding that medium. Just working with contrast. So how yeah. do you, what you are kind of go, do you do it like the way I do it? I mean, I tend to kind of, outline lighter and then mm -hmm. I'll use black in the shade in. Okay. So yeah, like... Just, I've exactly. just started just lining in black now. Just lining and in And the black. reason I didn't line in black is because it's so, it's really easy to blow a line with full full black Yeah, ink. I just never then with the, the, ink, fl the flow of juice dynamic. Uh, no, I actually have always used like talons. So just like mm. drawing ink. Yeah. So just what I, uh, I started with. I'm never diverted. I don't buy any kind of special brands or anything. I think I only start, I stopped using Dettol to put my stencils on. Like, really? Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, literally maybe Old last year. I would, like, had the same bottle as well, which Still is probably pretty Dettol, rank, yeah, but I uh, had the same bottle that I had started with. And I was like, I've got to get rid of that now. So like, it's sort of all churned up at the top. But yeah. Um, yeah, so it was only last year that I started using like stencil stuff. Do you thermal machine stuff? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. You 100%. got an Epson, one of uh, No, so just, just one of the straight Sponsor up, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just one of the straight up eBay ones. Just the the smaller so, ones. I've got the big um, thermal one where you put the the acetate through, oh, but it just doesn't pick up the fine lines. No, nah. so those like, are the 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 cheap or whatever wherever it is, yeah. eBay or Amazon or whatever. Yeah. Those those thermal machines are great. Oh, they are. I just tend to find that like if I had too many fine lines in one area, I'd get big flakes of yeah of stencil. We actually picked up the other day. Just get one of them. Um, what are they lint rollers? Get a lint roller and just and if you like sort of just rub on your clothes a little bit before so it's not super sticky and then just roll it over the bit of paper it takes all that off. Oh, fair. That's a good little good little thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since I got onto the onto the eco tank, mm. yeah, game changer because you can go super thin yeah. on the on the on the drawings on that. And is that the just like, is that like the just the brother print, ones that just, just sort fill, of fill the ink. Oh, okay. Oh, really? With stencil ink. Oh, I think I saw one of them actually. Um, the yeah, yeah, they had one of them at the convention like, that I went to. I was like, "Fuck, these are wicked!" Yeah, like, and I just it. literally like just I just sent it to the printer and it printed out. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it, and but then also it'll print full shading. Oh, okay. So micro realism stuff. Yeah. It'll, it's way better for. Yeah, because I always see that. Like I see people stencil I'm like. How the fuck are you printing that? Mm, <laughs> yeah. Like a dot matrix sort of. Yeah, but then there are times like there are times when the other one is just far superior. Yeah. I'm just a bit nerdy this, but yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what it's listening to. I'm yeah, sure yeah. it's they're gonna want to know. Yeah, um, of course. Do you ever get them and how do you deal with creative blocks? Um and where do you maybe draw your inspiration from for these pieces? A lot of it's very kind of like a nod to the traditional design. Yeah, so <laughs> 
That's where I have really enjoyed actually the past sort of how long I've been doing the past five years of doing fine line now. Cause I think I used to always be so heavily influenced by other tattooers and try and replicate styles. Um, whereas this, because like five years ago, it was still fairly sort of new doing the fine line stuff. Um, didn't really have many places to draw sort of inspiration from that. So I was left to my own devices and ultimately produced like what, what I do, which, which is great because I think I spent too long trying to replicate other people's tattoos and ultimately just was doing a bit of rip off really. Yeah. And, and I really hated it. So that's maybe why I sort of flipped styles a lot to try and find where, where I was and it just took me so long to find it, you know, mm. sort of, sort of, yeah. 14 years to figure out my own, my own thing. So now I think I reference, yeah, a nod to traditional tattoos, like sort of dragons, quite like um, saw Japanese. A heel, saw a heel piece you'd done the yeah. other day. No, oh, thanks, Luke. Yeah. And, and that's the key now, isn't it? Is getting that sort of healed fine line work. And yeah. I think at start it was coming back a little bit too light and uh, it was just learning to make things just a little bit darker and darker and yeah talking about that briefly because i think there was a lot of artists you speak to some of the slightly more traditional artists mm -hmm. and they seem to just believe that single needle doesn't heal well we did touch yeah. on it slightly earlier yeah. but i think it's it's really good to show the healed stuff and yeah. when it's done properly yeah 100 percent. and uh, and once again it's just application uh it's just how um how, how you apply that tattoo to to how it heals and if you make sure that there's enough dark in them areas um but it's a learning process it's one of them things oh, don't get me wrong fine line tattooing single line tattooing has been around so fucking long like you yeah. look at prison tattoos and Absolutely. that's kind of where it, like like teen angels things like in in la and that sort of stuff is um it it's been around yeah but it's never sort of come into sort of high fashion as it is now mm. so of course it's going to get a lot of scrutiny the same as like color realism did at like in 2010 time do yeah. you know what i mean like everyone's just like oh that's not going to look like that whereas now you look at the color realism people they've just sort of learned through the stages of doing that mm. to now get it to a point where it will look like that in, in yeah. 10 years time and that that's all that's all it is so i think a lot of the time maybe it's just people being a little bit bummed out that people that are doing fine line stuff are maybe quite busy at the moment because it's quite popular mm. um but once Purple. again that will just die off like all sort of trends do yeah. um but i think that fine line will will be here to stay it will be a solid um uh yeah it will be a solid style absolutely i don't think it's going to go anywhere it just needs to be perfected maybe a little bit yeah and um i'm excited to see where it goes but yeah. i agree i think people like people are always going to want and certain clientele are always going to want as it becomes more popular softer yeah more delicate work that's yeah because like, sometimes i chat to people and they actually really like that it's so soft visible. that you can hardly see it I want, and i'm like yeah and i've had people say oh you know i can use like the lightest gray yeah. wash you've got to yeah. line it with yeah and i'm like yeah, but then obviously, as you find the lighter you go, the more difficult it is to gauge how it's going to necessarily heal. And do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's being able to fit with that without like, because your name's on the work as well. Of course, yeah. You don't want to be like, oh God, is that what fine line work looks like? It looks like that's just yeah. like wishy-washy and like it's soft. But so yeah, all the time now, I will just line everything in black and I just do things darker. Um, so do you have much on you? Oh, um, fine line stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've got my neck. Um, and yeah, that's it. Is there any artists that you maybe like look up to? And, and maybe I'd love to know if you've got any space are you kind of saving for anyone who would be the, who would be the, the go-to. I just don't want to be tattooed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. over it. I've still got so much space as well, like considering how long I've been tattooing for. And I just, I, I'm not very good at being tattooed. So mm. I think I've got my back to finish off. Um, oh, which is lined it. and I'm like, I've got to get that done because it just looks ridiculous. And I think once that's done, I'm pretty much like done with being tattooed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there'll yeah. be small little spaces where, yeah, I would ultimately like to get like some fine line stuff from, from, uh, from artists. A guy called Smick. Do you know Smick Tattooer? I think, uh, I can't remember where he is now. I think he's in Australia now. Um, which sucks because I think he was in, uh, I can't remember where he was in Amsterdam for, for a long time. I was like, oh, I'm going to go there and get tattooed and missed out on that opportunity. But yeah, his stuff's great. Um, Geordie Hooper, I can't remember which side my butterfly's on. I think it's that side, is that right? There's a butterfly uh, cobweb yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I got tattooed by him. The rose and, is cool as well. Yeah, that was my ex-wife who'd done that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's cool. I really, really like the, the final stuff. And yeah, I would like to just go and get tattooed by people just to pick their brains on it as well because I don't like ultimately always trying to fucking learn about yeah, that shit and it's sort it, of man. 
Yeah. I just want to keep learning and just improving as much as possible. Yeah. What are you most proud of then? If we like kind of look back at maybe just achievements and do you feel like you have managed to achieve what you wanted with the industry? Um, um, or maybe even looking at outside of Tatooine and just in life in general, what you're most proud of? Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm proud of just yeah, proud of myself in general for navigating through the shit storm of life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, pretty proud of like my shop and sort of the the stamp that I've made on on Peterborough. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of changes through there in, in the nine years it's been open, and sort of been sad to see people leave. Mm. Uh, it's also been great to see people leave in the way that it's like nice to see them sort of <laughs> yeah. no, on, on a no, good no, note no, that no, they've no, gone no. somewhere good and they've like yeah. moved on and like they've sort of um, like done what they want to do and they sort of got out of Peterborough, which is ultimately a small little city, and they've moved on to go on to uh, great things, and that's yeah. cool. So I think you, you're always going to lose people in a shop. Um, and I electric, think at first it was a little workshop, electric workshop, yeah. And yeah. Um, at first it, it always feels a little bit like, oh, God, I'm losing that person. And mm. but I think you just got to expect that creatives just always want the next next thing in in their life, you know. Um, yeah, as it's, much as it's I so do. important, and it's very difficult. You have to remind yourself as a studio owner because you know you invest a lot into people, but then it is one of the it's the cycles in this industry. And yeah, it's like, it's like we don't own anyone, and no. everyone is their own. And, yeah. and you'd never want people to feel like that. Of course, there's obviously an element where you would expect like loyalty, but yeah. but it's it's good to see people kind of moving on and progressing. Definitely. That's all because that's what I'm focused on doing. Mm. So I would only expect that from other people. Yeah, I mean, if you um, get two or three years out of an artist being there, then that's that's wicked. That's yeah, a long time to man, like, sort of offer, you offer yourself gotta, up. Yeah, and just be grateful for what they've... I mean, I, I've changed my tune because I mm. definitely, definitely didn't used to think like that. Yeah. But yeah, and just be grateful for for the time with them, you know? Yeah, and I think for, for me as a shop owner as well, like... Um, I come from a background of what I think starting was like 50, 50 percentage. And then it sort of went up to 60, 40. And then like now, like it's starting to, I'm starting to realize you need to do a lot more for the artist. Like that, like, and ultimately I've always, always, I don't know, it's probably going to be an unpopular opinion to say, but I've always believed that if, if you own a tattoo shop, you, you should be a tattoo yourself just to understand of what the people are putting in all that hard work for. Like I'm always the hardest working person in my shop. Like I'll, yeah. I'll be there first and uh, ultimately try and be their last Ab absolutely yeah and i think if i'm not doing that then like it just seems as if i'm just sitting there just taking money off of people that work the fucking ass off. because if you don't tattoo and you own a tattoo shop i don't think you'll you can respect it and, and that's cool but i yeah. just don't think you really understand the mental strain of what it is to to be a tattooer like it's it's fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, mentally I mean, it draining doesn't, it doesn't sit particularly well with me and don't get me wrong because i'm i'm business minded in, mm. in a lot of respects like I'm fair enough i think i think it's that's just the way I'm wired. But like I, to see maybe, yeah, people who aren't involved in the industry at all, yeah. look at opening a studio as a business venture. Yeah. That, I mean, first of all, it wouldn't have any longevity anyway, yeah. but it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't quite sit right. Yeah. And there's obviously ex exceptions and it's sort of like, sort of, um, but, but then again, there's also the other side where I'm like, if you are deeply in love with the industry, um, if I had you more time to be able it. to look after my shop and my people, yeah. I'd ultimately be running a better shop. But because I'm working six to eight hours a day with everyone else, there's a lot of shit that gets missed. Mm. And I feel like if I wasn't working that much, I'd have more time to sort of make the shop better and offer up so there is that balance that yeah if if you're not tattooing then you've I got a bit more time to, to to run the business yeah i always feel guilty as well because i like I'm, I'm i'm like booking myself slightly less in order to be able to pick up the slack with yeah all the projects that we've got going on mm. it's particularly hectic at the minute yeah um but then hoping that then it'll be calm down and be like no i will be back i'll be yeah. doing more and more yeah yeah yeah. because i don't want to feel like that Do yeah you know of course I mean? that, that people think oh he's not fucking, he's not pulling his weight yeah because exactly. I like, you know what I mean? I get onto people about pulling that weight. So, yeah. No, it's mad. I mean, mm. I could sit here and, yeah. and chat for ages. Right, little word about some of my favorite cartridges from Ghost. These are the Nano. And obviously, as the name suggests, they're designed for a lot of the finer work. These go all the way down to a 0 0.18 mil up to a 0.35. Now, the ones I've got here are a three liner in the 0.2 and a one liner in the 0.25. Make sure you go and grab yourself some exclusively from Star. If you use the code ATFCT10, you get 10% off as well. Where, I and mean, I'd love to know particularly about Electric Workshop, because right. to have run a studio as successfully as you have mm -hmm. for that period of time, um, like, 
maybe what's the secret to that? And where do you see it going? What's your vision? And do you, like, would you ever expand the business and the studio itself? Yeah, that's always a great question. I think a lot of people always said, like, oh, we didn't open another shop. And I, I've just always believed, like, uh, and taught that, like, tattooing is sacred. You know, I, I would never want to sort of um, make multiple shops once again. Everyone's free to do what they want to want to do, but in, in in my heart of hearts, I just feel like I've been lucky enough to have this. That's my baby. I can't be at three different locations to make sure that it's all running the way that I wanted to run. The quality. Control. Um. So yeah, it's more just I've gifted myself that shop, and uh, and that's what I've been lucky enough to do. And so never had any plans to open more mm. of the same shops and like sort of brand it and franchise it, which which is great. And I think like leading into like the new world of tattooing I think that that's fully uh, viable you can definitely do that mm. um, but I probably wouldn't want that stress either yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. quite hard like running a shop uh, and yeah I'm quite surprised that I managed to be able to do it for nine years I always feel just like it was Mate, such a, a fleeting idea I was just like I wasn't happy we were I wasn't happy at the shop that I was at and uh, and we just a few of us had decided to to leave there and I was just like, I'm not, I'm not happy here. Like, there's, I'm not going to talk about it. But there's things that were going on, and I was like, I just want to get, I just want to get out of here. So uh, yeah, I, I set up another shop, and and the guys left with me, and uh, it was just such a passing thought. I never imagined it to be what it became. Yeah, um, it's always the way though, isn't it? Yeah, it's the stuff that you don't that just happens yeah. like in naturally. Yeah, and I think harder than setting up a shop is is maintaining a shop. So sort of keeping like, I think as they were saying, if you get past seven years in a business, then like you're pretty much like, you know you're good. Doing. But I felt like it was great and then got to seven years and then <laughs> it started going down. No. I was like, what the fuck? It's backwards for me. <laughs> but, Hang on a second. Yeah, so I, going. yeah, I was told getting past seven years was the, was good. Yeah. But um, there is a, there, there would have been, and, and I know how difficult it is. So mm. I, I will know without you even telling me that yeah. there would have been some re like ridiculously difficult struggles yeah. along the way. Yeah. Touching on it briefly, I mm. won't go massively into it, but like, yeah, to get yourself through that is fair yeah. enough. And I think fair, like, there's probably not enough people would give recognition for that, you know? Mm. So yeah, good on you. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, and if I can get my studio to anywhere near that, God, that yeah. period of time. Sure you can, man. It's a fucking beautiful space as well. Thank Let you. me just say, this place is like, like my dream sort of oh, interior. Man. So, so cool. And I think we were talking as well before we started recording, just how, yeah, how I envisage sort of where I want to go, like shop wise. And it's very hard to sort of maybe give up that sort of street shop sort of thing I do feel like it is a bit of a, a, a dying thing mm. now um, I think there's obviously still a place for it but mm. yeah ultimately a lot of people sort of do go off and have like more private studios or just private studios where like one person or like they'll have two people in there I don't think I could ever do that I mean I'd again, hate to work on my own to their own yeah. I have to say like you know, I understand why yeah. people would do it it's not for me no um, I think just bouncing ideas off of people is like the most important thing to do I so just, to, even to ask like can I grab your eyes to make sure this is straight like if you're on your own like who's yeah. doing that for you I mean sometimes like on big bit I've had like have someone else help me put the stencil on it for the yeah. thing's huge yeah yeah do you know what I mean it's easy putting another set of eyes on it and like yeah. you're constantly learning and evolving yeah I think it helps um, create and atmosphere I would, and all I would sorts be, of things yeah I would fear stagnant in. Yeah. But if it works for some people, it works for some people. Of course, yeah. But I do yeah, think yes. that is, um, you just see it so much now, like just people just open up their own little places and um, yeah, I just, I, I could do that. But yeah. I think that's just probably maybe because of our generation of just growing up working in shops like that. Yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah. The silence would be deafening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, mate. I'll tell you what, this is it. So if you could listen to one track on right. repeat at the studio, I was talking with one of the guests <laughs> previously yeah. about they go on guest spots and stuff and like this, the music's just like, they've got Britney Spears on repeat. Right, yeah. Like what's the one song that you like, that you could listen to or like what's the one thing that you would have in, in the shop to set the oh, i tell you what, it would just have to be Queens of Stone Age. I think they are like probably the main band that we listen to in the shop. Mm. Um, so just, yeah, any Vibes. one of their songs just... On, on loop would, would work yeah. I guess what about a guilty pleasure uh, we always do this little curveball half hour as well where you know your Britney Spears will come out and you just have a little half hour of that and it's sort of it's quite funny but got to be it's got to be half hour and then it's got to be over yeah 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 it's just if it's on repeat the same yeah. stuff on repeat no, you know what like a not. mega it's, into like lo-fi as well like while working okay. um, I think it can get a little bit 
Well, like um, a, a like sleepy. down tempo, like hip hop stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lo-fi hip hop or lo- like uh, lo-fi jazz and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I feel like. Yeah, it just sits in the background quite well. It's concentration. Music. Yeah, because sometimes like you have to pick your music like to your clientele as well. Sometimes like, if we have like, because um, we have quite a, a good sort of middle age sort of clientele that come through. So like, I can't be just like smashing out like metal, which I would ultimately love to be listening to. Yeah, or um, like real heavy American gang. Yeah, rap. exactly. Yeah, you just it's can't. Like, you got a you, bit intense. Yeah, you know, like as much as you want to be listening to the music you want to listen to, which is comfortable, you're also running a business, and there's also people yeah. in there that you've got to appease. So. Mate, it's, you get a sweat on. Yeah. If you're in charge of DJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I never do. I'll come in and one like Brad, for example, the artist to be like, oh, thank God you're here, mate. Yeah. Like, I've, yeah. I've been having to DJ for the last like, two hours. <laughs> I think <laughs> luckily I Spotify is, is great for that. So yeah, it's, uh, it does do good. Um, I forgot, I haven't given you actually the guest that was left for you from the previous, right. um, previous no, the question that was left for you from the previous mm-hmm. guest. Um, and that was, What's most important in tattooing for you? Um, giving the client what they want, to be honest. Mm. Um, as much as ultimately I want to, I, I know what is good. Um, and I will try and do that and make sure it's like, look, th- this is what I think in my professional opinion is always a great word to use. Um, this doesn't work and that doesn't work. And majority of my clients are, are fantastic and they do listen, but if they don't and they ultimately do want that and, and they do want it the other way around, you know, like I do try and sort of change that as much as I can and say, look, like if I was, if I was to do that, that way around at the top of your arm, it'd be upside down. Right. And they're like, yeah. And then you can change, you can change like someone's, someone's mind like that. But if ultimately they don't, then it's their toe. So I think it's always so been important it gets to me. Past the elbow, yeah, you wouldn't have it that way. No, you wouldn't. But then ultimately, like, it's, it's theirs. Like, it's it's on their you, body. You like, like, it. like, fuck and it. And I like, say, well, and like, why would you have it that way? I was like, well, well, you know, when your arms down or in photographs or when other people look at it, and they're like, yeah. it's not for other people. Yeah, I'm like, well, it's, I know. Yeah, but like aesthetically, yeah. Like, and there's only so many times you can say that until you just go, ultimately, you're paying me. Across. You're paying me to have whatever yeah. for what you want, you know? And like across that way is a different thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's just like, yeah. you know, so, but I've been, it is what it is. I guess the best yeah. you can do is advise. Yeah, exactly. You advise. And if they, if they are adamant, then it's their tattoo at the end mm-hmm. of the day, as much as like we put our name to it. And um, it's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? Because like, it is ours. But we get we're gifting it to someone, yeah. and then they take it on for the rest of their life, and like that's I love that about tattooing. That's the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, but well, the sickest things is like seeing like you know, so you've tattooed a client, and then you see like a client will tag you yeah. when they're like on the other side of the world. Yeah. It's like, oh, sick. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's cool. You think how many people have you've tattooed? Yeah. I'm like morbid. Don't know, but I had a little thought. I was like, I wonder whether anyone I've tattooed has passed away. Yeah. Yeah, like actually, yeah, I have. Uh, I tattooed her. Uh, she passed away. Bless her, and her brother came in to have the same tattoo, so I had to replicate what she had like on him. And yeah, it's strange. It's a strange thought. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's not end to. No, yeah, anyway. that's way more of it. But, <laughs> but it's nice. But then it's that gift of like, and I've always it's said, just like you'll that... always remember who I am, like sort yeah. of thing. It's just kind of like you, like you just live in. Uh, yeah, you're in someone's mind constantly whenever they look at that, and they'll tell someone mm. who did it. Uh, What's your What's your mate? What's your oldest piece? My oldest piece, my first piece on my ankle, some old English it says oh, SDMF. It stands for Strength, Determination, Merciless Forever, which is okay. a Black Label Society like tattoo. So it's pretty metal. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. sick. And your favorite? Favorite, um, probably. I got tattooed by Valerie Vargas. So like, yeah. I've got this oh, like witchy fair. lady up here. Yeah, was it like a woman? Yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah. And it's right at the top of the thigh as well. It never gets any sun. It's sort of you know I mean? the perfect placement for it. Healed so, yeah, well. Probably that. What would you like to know or a question you'd want to leave for the next guest? Or um ooh, I was thinking about this earlier as well, and I had it and now I've forgotten what I was gonna say. I had a really good one as well. That's all right. Take your time. Um Yeah. Question. What? Tattoo related or not? I guess. Yeah, because I was trying to do it not tattoo related. Yeah. So well, I was I mean, thinking more brilliant. like where, uh, at what age and what was it that you think was the defining thing that made you who you are? 
Oh my God, I like that. <laughs> at what moment? Yeah, was... what, what age or what was it that happened, the most defining moment of your life that sort of you think has um, shaped led, you. yeah, shaped you to become the person that you are? I think it's great. I love yeah. that. Yeah, sick, man. Mm. Sweet. I mean, yeah, I've been, it's been great to sit down. I could yeah, probably sit right. here and do about an hour's chat with yeah. you just about how you actually make the work. Yeah. So um, we've probably barely scratched the surface, yeah. but it's been really good. Yeah, and thanks, like man. I said, massive inspiration. Like, please keep doing what you're doing. Church I know you bad. will anyway because yeah. you've managed to get to the point you have. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's sick. And thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Um, I guess, really, where can people find you now coming up? Peterborough, obviously. Yep. Uh, I've got no plans to be anywhere. That's kind of... Uh, it's, it's like I was saying earlier it's very hard to sort of leave anywhere especially when you're in a shop like sort of just seems like extra work <laughs> yeah um, how far in advance are you booking uh, probably like about a month two months yeah, yeah it's not crazy so, um, I think a lot of people always think that it's a lot crazier than it is has been before like I think yeah. no um, it's not it's the clout of people saying yeah. oh, I've got like a year waiting this yeah bollocks yeah no I quite like that my, my books are a lot quieter than they, they used to be sort of can plan around it yeah. but yeah it's literally like month two months um, and yeah I'm just ultimately in Peterborough uh, I haven't really thought of any going anywhere for this year sick yeah, so. how often do you do pencil and paper drawing uh, never okay now's your chance <laughs> sweet can't <laughs> wait <laughs> actually saying that I do it on napkins in uh, in restaurants now and then just to impress the kids because clever yeah I like that because you've got the practice in <laughs> yeah yeah um, so as depends what you give me though because I can do like five things yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's one of them five <laughs> We've got a piece of A5 paper. You've got a Bic, you've got a HB, a 2B, and a half mil fine liner. I'm going to be hitting you with some 21 questions just to really throw you off. And I'm going to give you three minutes to draw. Draw. Graffiti. Reincarnation. Three, three, two, one, go. What is the worst fashion decision you've ever made? Oh man, so many. <laughs> you seen photos of me when I was younger. Um, I bought these purple Vivian Westwood's once shoes. They were fucking awful. What were they like loafers? Uh, yeah, but they were like rubber. Oh, really? No. Yeah, I've had some. I've had some stonkers. Yeah. All right, you can only eat one meal for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? Steak. Steak. Yeah. Steak with what? Um, chips. Steak and Steak chips. Steak and chips forever. Okay. What's your biggest irrational phobia? Dying. Okay. Uh, if you could be someone else for a day, who would it be? Living or dead? Um, who would I like to be? That's nearly a minute down. Oh, How's it coming? Yeah. Uh, it's coming. What are we doing? We're doing a wall. I'm... Uh, I'm doing what I think graffiti is which is words on a wall <laughs> <laughs> classic alright um, okay you can time travel where's the first place you go in uh, Woodstock sick 79 whenever it was yeah if you could be reincarnated as any animal which one are you going to choose um, probably a tiger I guess they seem like they'd probably survive a bit better okay than any other you can teleport anywhere in the world right now where are you going and why? Um, to graffiti school. <laughs> <laughs> One minute, 20 left. All right, would you rather be without elbows or knees? Um, oh, my knees are fucked anyway, so yeah, probably I'm fine about my knees. Yeah, knees. Okay. Are we going yacht or private jet? Yacht. Yacht all yeah, day. Yeah, I love like that. The only thing is that you can kind of get round a bit quicker on a jet, though, can't you? Yeah, but if I'm living a life where I don't have to be anywhere, then you're... Okay. Unless, what, why do I have to get to work next day? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> then I'm guess probably pick got... a jet. <laughs> Let's go for a jet, then. But if I've got enough money to be on either of them, then I'm just sitting comfortably in the sea. I'm chilling in the sea. Yeah. Nice. What is one track which is the soundtrack to your life? Um, Jefferson Aeroplane, White Rabbit. Okay, nice that. If you could give your child self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, 30 seconds left. Don't worry what everyone says about you. Nice. Give me something that most people don't know about you. Um, I've got a lot of this. I had a head brace. 
at like 16. I had a fucking head brace. Yeah, yeah it was the what, worst braces thing. and then knocker? Literally, yeah, it came out stuck out here. Like, summer, I was wearing, like, shorts, what? t-shirt and a scarf to hide the fucker. Yeah, it was Mine cool. was, like, yellow and red and blue. Oh, well, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's mad. Oh, yeah. there you go. There's your time up. Yeah. So, graffiti-style reincarnation. How are we looking? Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't get the wall in there, so I sort of try to do like life and then the reincarnation of like That's butterfly. Sick. But yeah. Love that. I didn't get the spray paint drips in there and That's all right, we only have three minutes. Yeah. Um if you can sign and print and date it, that'd be amazing. Yeah, cool. How nice. Spell life. L I F E, right? L I F E, yeah, nice. God, sick man. Right. Thanks so much for being a part of it. It's been good. Yeah, thanks so much. Been good to have you down. Cheers, man. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the episode this week. Don't forget to head over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave us a rating and a review as well on Spotify or podcast, wherever you listen to them. Really helps the podcast grow. Massive thank you for all the support so far, all of the comments, and to our sponsor, Ghost Cartridges for Season 2. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st Century Tattoo. I guess maybe as we've got a little bit older, it's like, oh, it seems like they don't give a fuck. But then maybe like everyone that was maybe our age <laughs> looking at us going, hey, you don't fuck. give a fuck. <laughs> maybe I'm just getting old. That's, that's all it is, I think. Shit. Which sucks.